Fantastic Mr. Fox by Roald Dahl Chapter 6 The Race Now there began a desperate race, the machines against the foxes. In the beginning, the hill looked like this. After about an hour, as the machines bit away more and more soil from the hilltop, it looked like this. Sometimes the foxes would gain a little ground and the clanking noises would grow fainter and Mr Fox would say, We're going to make it, I'm sure we are. But then a few moments later, the machines would come back at them and the crunch of the mighty shovels would get louder and louder. Once the foxes actually saw the sharp metal edge of one of the shovels as it scraped up the earth just behind them. Keep going, my darlings! panted Mr Fox. Don't give up! Keep going! the fat boggies shouted to Bunts and Bean. We'll get him any moment now! Have you caught sight of him yet? Bean called back. Not yet! shouted Boggis. But I think you're close! I'll pick him up with my bucket! shouted Bunts. I'll chop him to pieces! But by lunchtime the machines were still at it, and so were the poor foxes. The hill now looked like this. The farmers didn't stop for lunch, they were too keen to finish the job. Hi there, Mr Fox! yelled Bunts, leaning out of his tractor. We're coming to get you now! You've had your last chicken! yelled Boggis. You'll never come prowling round my farm again. A sort of madness had taken hold of the three men. The tall, skinny bean, the dwarfish, pot-bellied bunts were driving their machines like maniacs, racing the motors and making the shovels dig at a terrific speed. The fat boggis was hopping about like a dervish, shouting, Faster! Faster! By five o'clock in the afternoon, this is what had happened to the hill. The hole the machines had dug was like the crater of a volcano. It was such an extraordinary sight that crowds of people came rushing out from the surrounding villages to have a look. They stood on the edge of the crater and stared down at Boggis and Bunce and Bean. Hi there, Boggis. What's going on? We're after a fox. You must be mad. The people jeered and laughed. But this only made the three farmers more furious and more obstinate and more determined than ever not to give up until they had caught the fox. Chapter 7 We'll Never Let Him Go at six o'clock in the evening, Bean switched off the motor of his tractor and climbed down from the driver's seat. Bunce did the same. Both men had had enough. They were tired and stiff from driving the tractors all day. They were also hungry. Slowly they walked over to the small fox's hole in the bottom of the huge crater. Bean's face was purple with rage. Bunce was cursing the fox with dirty words that cannot be printed. Boggis came waddling up. Dang and blast that filthy, stinking fox! He said, what the heck do we do now? I'll tell you what we don't do, Bean said. We don't let him go. We'll never let him go, Bunce declared. Never, 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 cried Boggis. Did you hear that, Mr Fox? yelled Bean, bending low and shouting down the hole. It's not over yet, Mr Fox. We're not going home till we've strung you up dead as a dingbat. Whereupon the three men all shook hands with one another and swore a solemn oath that they would not go back to their farms until the fox was caught. What's your next move? 
asked Bunce, the pot-bellied dwarf. We're sending you down the hall to fetch him up, said Bean. Down you go, you miserable midget. Not me, screamed Bunce, running away. Bean made a sickly smile. When he smiled, you saw his scarlet gums. You saw more gums than teeth. Well, there's only one thing to do, he said. We starve him out. We camp here day and night watching the hole. He'll come out in the end. He'll have to. So Boggis and Bunce and Bean sent messages down to their farms asking for tents, sleeping bags and supper. Chapter 8 The Foxes Begin to Starve That evening three tents were put up in the crater on the hill. One for Boggis one for Bunce and one for Bean. The tents surrounded Mr Fox's hole and the three farmers sat outside their tents eating their supper. Boggis had three boiled chickens smothered in dumplings. Bunce had six doughnuts filled with disgusting goose liver paste and Bean had two gallons of cider. All three of them kept their guns beside them. Boggis picked up a steaming chicken and held it close to the fox's hole. Can you smell this, Mr Fox? he shouted. It's lovely, tender chicken. Why don't you come up and get it? The rich scent of chicken wafted down the tunnel to where the foxes were crouching. Oh, Dad, said one of the small foxes. Couldn't we just sneak up and snatch it out of his hand? Don't you dare, said Mrs Fox. That's just what I want you to do. But we're so hungry, they cried. How long will it be till we get something to eat? Their mother didn't answer them, nor did their father. There was no answer to give. As darkness fell, Bunce and Bean switched on the powerful headlamps of the two tractors and shone them on to the hole. Now, said Bean, we'll take in turns to keep watch. One watches was two sleep, and so on, all through the night. Boggis said, What if the fox digs a hole right through the hill and comes out on the other side? You didn't think of that one, did you? Of course I did said Bean, pretending he had. Go on, then. Tell us the answer, said Boggis. Bean picked something small and black out of his ear and flicked it away. How many men have you got working on your farm? he asked. Thirty-five, Boggis said. I've got thirty-six, Bunt said. And I've got thirty-seven, Bean said. That makes one hundred and eight men altogether. We must order them to surround the hill. Each man will have a gun and a flashlight. There will be no escape then for Mr Fox. So the order went down to the farms and that night one hundred and eight men formed a tight ring around the bottom of the hill. They were armed with sticks and guns and hatchets and pistols and all sorts of other horrible weapons. This made it quite impossible for a fox, or indeed any other animal, to escape from the hill. The next day, the watching and waiting went on. Boggis and Bunce and Bean sat upon small stools, staring at the fox's hole. They didn't talk much. They just sat there with their guns on their laps. Every so often Mr Fox would creep a little closer towards the mouth of the tunnel and take a sniff. Then he would creep back again and say, They're still there. Are you quite sure? Mrs Fox would ask. Positive, said Mr Fox. I can smell that man being a mile away. He stinks. Thank you.
you for listening to Grandad Orc. You can find other books by clicking on the tab below this video, and if you'd like to hear several books read back to back, then have a look in the playlist. If you'd like to help Grandad Orc read more books, then please let him know in the comments below. And also, if you subscribe to the channel, you'll know when the next one is ready. If you would like to buy this book, it should be available at your local bookstore, library, and you can find the link to some online stores in the description below. So, until next time, bye for now. Music